Hello students, and congratulations on making it to section two. In section 2.1 here, there's gonna have four videos. And in this part, we're going to look at the difference quotient. And you're gonna to start to build your concept of the derivative. So let's get started. Today, we're gonna to look at this concept and we're gonna draw a picture together. What we're gonna draw is a graph, a very simple graph. And what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna draw my function. I'm gonna do something like, like that. So this is gonna be my function f of x. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna put down an x value, all right? So if I put my x value right, right there, let's say right there, then my y value, the coordinate corresponding to that, so this is x, then this would be x comma f of x. So whatever my x value is, substitute it into my function, I'll be good to go. Now the next part of this that I wanna look at is I wanna to go to some distance over here. And I'm gonna call that distance h. All right, so what happens is um, I'm not going to call this x2 or anything like that. Um, what I'm going to do is what I notice is that it's going to be my x value plus my h value. So then x value plus my h value. And that's what I'll denote that point as. Okay, so what's the uh, corresponding point to that? Well, that point would be my new x value, which is x plus h, comma the function at x plus h. So f of x plus h. So now I'm looking at this, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do my best to connect them uh, with the line. All right, so here's the line that connects them. That's pretty close. All right, so I'm gonna put some arrows at the end of that. And you want to think about, okay, what is that line called? Well, that is going to be called our secant line. Secant means to cut, so it is cutting the graph across those two points. So now I want to think, okay, what does that expression f of x plus h minus f of x over x plus h represent? What I'm looking at are my y values. The y value in that second part there minus the y value in that first point. So I'm looking here, this y value that I get right here, so this y value, minus this y value, and then this x value minus this x value. So I have two points and I'm doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So what does that represent? You should be thinking of some particular word. This represents the slope of the secant line above. And if you're looking at this function, hopefully you're looking at it and you're like, oh, part of that's actually going to uh, simplify. This x minus x right here, those are gonna cancel out. And so I could simplify this to say f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So it does simplify, this function does simplify a lot. So now I'm looking at this next question. As h, which is the distance between the x values, x and x plus h approaches zero, so what's going to happen to the secant line? So let's think about this. So if I put in x here, I'll put it right there, and then I have the distance between h, or the distance for h should be a lot shorter to be like uh, about half of what it was. Well, then I would have this point and this point. And if I were to connect them by a line, it would look something like that, okay? Well, if I did that again, and I had h getting even smaller, so right there, and I'll go right there. So then I would have this point 
for my first one and my second one would be there. All right, so then if I would connect them with the line, it looks something like that, pretty close. All right, so what you should be thinking is, uh, as the as distance between x and x plus h, as h approaches zero, well, my the line that I'm drawing starts to approach what is known as the tangent line. So as h approaches zero, the secant line becomes a tangent line. So now we want to think, what is the limit or what is this following limit? So the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h, what is that going to represent for us? So what's happening here is that the distance between my x1 and my x2 values are becoming increasingly smaller, much, much smaller, so that h value is approaching zero. So that's where I'm getting that h approaches zero here. So this represents the slope of a tangent line that is going to be parallel to the secant line above. What happens is the slopes are equal. All right, so we have a couple things left here. Suppose f of x is negative x squared minus f of x plus one. Let's find this limit. Okay, so if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna have the limit as h approaches zero of negative x plus h squared minus four times x plus h plus one minus negative x squared minus four x plus one all over h. Okay, let's keep going with this. So now the limit as h approaches zero. Um, if I expand that and uh, distribute the negative, I'm gonna get negative x squared uh, minus two xh minus h squared minus four x minus four h plus one and then distribute that negative, we'll get plus x squared plus four x minus one all over h. All right, so let's see. I have um, this negative x squared and this positive x squared that cancel out. I have a four x and a negative four x, and then I have a positive one and a negative one. All right, so then what happens here is everything that's left over, so I've got this, um, 2xh, h squared, and 4h. Everything has an h in common, so I'm gonna factor that out. So I'll have here, now the limit as h approaches zero of h times negative 2x minus h minus four, all over h. And now what happens is that those h's divide out so now the H's are, are divided out. So then I can substitute in my zero now. So negative two X minus zero minus four equals negative two X minus four. So that's gonna be my result here of my function above. Well, what, what do we call that result? So that previous thing that we just found is going to be the derivative. And so uh, what ends up happening is this little bit right here, the way we say that is f prime of x. So that's going to be f prime of x of the function f of x, also known as the derivative. Now we're going to, in the next video, see what this, deriv what this d derivative represents in terms of the graph of f of x. Really dive into that graph and really try to understand what that limit is doing with that h so that you can really begin to build your concept of the derivative. If you need any help, I'm Mr. Hernandez, and this was Mr. Hernandez Teaches.